This capital murder case is going to go outside of the courtroom. The jury is going to drive some 40 minutes here to Parkland, Florida, the site of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And that building there that you see, that's the one that they will be entering. We expect the same path of the admitted gunman from the time that he exited an Uber until he exited, blending in with other students. This visit to the scene is called a jury view. The panel of 22 will move silently as a group through building 1200. They'll be wearing protective gear and won't be allowed to take pictures or notes. The defense wanted an added restriction on where jurors can go. Prosecutors disagree. They do not want the jurors to go into the classrooms. We object to that. You know, the, the uh, victims were killed, victims were shot in those classrooms. So we object to uh, any restriction on jurors being able to go inside. In March, the defense filed a motion to sanitize the crime scene, saying, quote, there is not one good reason that the jury should see blood and bodily fluids, Valentine's Day cards, candy, and incomplete assignments on desks. Judge Elizabeth Shear denied that motion, finding a jury view useful and proper for the case. This building you see there, it remains fenced off. It can even appear abandoned to us here across the street. It's been closed to the public for over four years. There were efforts that were made to camouflage it. It's a looming reminder of the tragedy that shook this community and those plans for destruction could go forward after this sentencing takes place. Reporting in Parkland, Florida, Julia Janae with Court TV. Let's bring back the think tank still with us, criminal defense attorneys Renee Hill and Carmen Rowe and Paul, Molly Palmer. Molly, this is such a unique situation where basically they processed the crime scene and then they locked it up. And five years later, this jury is going back to what, as it is, as it was left with the blood, with all of it. Would the judge sure make the right decision by allowing this? Uh, or do you think this is something that's going to be number one or really high up there on the list of things if this um, is a death case that goes all the way there and is appealed? I think if this is a death case that goes all the way there and is appealed, this is going to be one of a number of enumerated errors that Judge Shearer has made. And the reason that this is so unique, it's not just, I mean, we do have jury views in, in certain trials. Um, either side can request it if it has the ability to assist the trier of fact, the jury, with rendering a decision. But we have to remember that Nicholas Cruz pled guilty, okay? And, and I think that that was the crux of what the defense was saying in their motion in March. You know, if what is the purpose of having the jurors walk through? We've seen in the trial, they've watched a lot of video evidence. They've watched, they've seen photographic evidence. We have a lot that's already come in from the prosecution about the nature of his offense that he's pled guilty to. This is a question of life or death. And so the defense has properly preserved these objections. And I do think that the argument that going through this, this museum of terror, you know, having it be so preserved like this, can that leave any juror fair and impartial? I just can't imagine that it will. And that is grounds for reversal. Uh, yeah. Renee, it does feel a bit like a haunted house that they're going to, you know, loading up on a bus and uh, and going and viewing this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm I very surprised that the crime scene was not cleaned up after it was processed. And to preserve it, you know, for five years, everything that Molly said, this is going to pull at the heartstrings of the jurors. It will completely cloud their judgment as to what they are actually tasked with doing here. And that will prevent this defendant from receiving a fair and partial decision being made by this jury. I think it is definitely error for them to walk through a crime scene that has been just left the way things were. And it's not necessary in, in terms of what they need to evaluate here. Yeah, that they think, right. You know? Normally, a uh, jury view, you go and you see, well, oh, it's it's um, too far for the person to have gotten there and commit the crime. It's a, right. you know, you're showing something constructive to a jury so they can evaluate if something happened or it didn't. 
Well, we all know what happened. They've seen video of it happening. Um, but it, I, Carmen, does this mean that um, well, one of the other things that the defense brought up is they're worried that the judge is going, not going to be able to or the, the, the staff is not going to be able to contain their emotions. It's that creepy inside. Um, what are your thoughts on this? jury view. Ted, I mean, I agree. So we have the video. Do we really need to go to the scene? And these prosecutors need to be careful in a case where you have this much evidence of going too far. And as Molly said, you go too far, it's coming back. I mean, I say that, but as a caveat, this is sentencing, right? And so sentencing, generally, it's really hard to get things that are so erroneous that you can get a reversal on them. But I would just like to note also for the record that if there really is blood and fluid there contained for five years, there are health concerns. So again, for this judge to allow them to go back there to this, this, you know, horrible scene is just, it defies logic in a case where we have so much evidence of what that scene looked like at the time that this offense occurred that he already pled guilty to. And Molly, there's been a mountain of testimony, not only the physical evidence, the video of the actual shooting and, and the autopsy photos, but then these accounts from these kids that were injured and saw their classmates laying there dead. Um, this is all going to shift, though, is it not, after the state's case finishes up? And it's not going to be what Nicholas Cruz did. It's going to be him, Nicholas Cruz. Our viewers are going to get a much different feel. It's almost as though there's going to be two separate trials. Right, exactly. And I think we have some idea of how the defense is going to proceed. We've heard them make a motion to Judge Schurer to basically show the jurors a map of his brain. We've heard um, that he has a diagnosis of autism, certainly a lot of other mental health issues. And so what the defense is tasked with doing is presenting not only those mitigating circumstances that relate to his mental state at the time, but also like his life circumstances. You know, he was adopted, both of his adopted parents are dead. Um, his biological mother uh, had a lot of issues, including um, significant drug addiction. And so we're gonna hear, I think, a pretty harrowing and terrible story about this young man and how he ended up being this type of person who would do such a heinous and horrible thing. And I, I think when it comes to being a juror, you know, we have to consider that these individuals tasked with deciding life or death, which is a really difficult thing to be tasked with to begin with, are not only sitting through this testimony, harrowing, horrible, difficult to listen to testimony from teachers and students. And then we're going to hear about this young man who had you know, not that it excuses his conduct, but an absolutely horrible life. And that's a lot. And there's no help. You know, the, the court system doesn't provide any counseling. You're told not to talk about it to anybody. This is going to go on for many, many months. I mean, what a terribly difficult trial these jurors are sitting through. Oh, I can't, <clears throat> can't imagine it. Um, you know, we're not seeing a lot of the exhibits um, for obvious reasons court order and it's hard to you know keep a dry eye listening to these stories and, and watching this unfold and you see the families react and I can't imagine what the jurors are being exposed to um, it's just very very difficult work